The next thing to say here is that in a synapse, we ensure that the direction of impulse is in just one direction. Because these ligand-gated channels are the only channels that will accept the acetylcholine or the neurotransmitter, then there's nothing on this membrane. So it means that the, there cannot be a action potential going back that way. So synapses, if you like, are a bit like the valves on a vein which only allow movement forwards. And if there's any backflow, they shut, uh, and the heart as well. And so they only allow movement forwards. That's one clear importance of the synapse. The second is integration of signals. And if I was to We can, in fact, have integration which can be either convergent or divergent. And this is a way of spreading the signal or integrating it by either a convergent would be if we had a number of neurons here. I should make that more of a... If we had a number of neurons which came in to give one signal. And this is very important because we enter into the other area of the synapse which is really important, which is a process called summation. And what we have here, and this comes back to what I was saying earlier about this action potential not necessarily being formed from the input of one axon, is that we have a combined effect now of these, for example, it might be hundreds actually, or thousands, but these three axons could all contribute to the amount of sodium that diffuses into the new axon. And therefore, that will definitely raise the, as the sodium ones diffuse, raise the membrane potential to the threshold potential, and then chung, we get the action potential. <coughs> and in this respect, we have another way of controlling whether that action potential is generated. Because I have shown here sodium ions, sodium ions coming in as a result of the sigma of, of number one, number two, number three. In what I've just described, I talked about the neurotransmitter coming across from all three and binding and creating loads of sodium ions coming in. Threshold potential, great. But it doesn't always work like that. And this is the phenomenon of summation. In that we can have both inhibitory and excitatory rotatory, uh, responses as a result of these axons. And so it depends upon which of these ligand-gated channels are open. So I'm actually just going to take this ligand-gated channel out and put another one here. Which is different. And this one is going to allow chloride ions in. And that is likely to come from a different neurotransmitter. So let's have a look at this axon here, number three. Imagine if it has a certain neurotransmitter in its vesicles, which are which fuse and eject out. And this neurotransmitter binds to a different ligand-gating channel and causes Cl minus ions to come in. The other two. Uh, so we'd say that these were excitatory because they caused Na plus to come in and we know that Na plus is pushing it towards the threshold potential which will cause an action potential. But Co minus is pulling it back down towards a more negative value. So 
As a result of this axon firing and this neurotransmitter being released, it is on this postsynaptic membrane that the ligand-gated channel can actually inflict an inhibitory response. And summation is when we add up these responses and ask, has that hit the threshold potential? So we've got some sodium ions coming through that ligand-gated channel, we've got some sodium ions coming through that ligand-gated channel, but we've got some chloride ions coming out, and the net result might be minus 63 millivolts from minus 70 in the, from the rest of it. And we're short of the minus 55 we need here. And so therefore, we wouldn't have a fire. But if this happened to have been excited as well, and it had been... a sodium ion gated channel and we've got NAs in here as well then we would have three excitatory gated channel responses and that might take it to minus 55 and then we get the action potential. So these synapses can be excitatory or inhibitory. And it depends upon which of the ligand-gated channels they open. So it's important to remember they're not actually inhibitory or excitatory neurons. It's the neurotransmitter they release and which ligand-gated channel that will open, which will dictate whether we push it towards the membrane potential or not. Now this is very important in us being able to control our behaviour as a result of our nervous system. Because if you think about the uh, responses that we may get, sometimes it's important to not react to a stimulus. And the inhibition might be the, uh, the core of the day. And so if all of these produced uh, neurotransmitter, which forms chloride ions to go in, it would stay below the threshold potential. Okay. Now, outside this, there are two other things I wanted to discuss, and that is the type of summation we get. Um, I did say that there was a convergent system here, where you had a number of axons coming in to give signals to one neuron, and then that would fire. So you can see we've converged the signal to one. The other one is divergent, and divergent is when we actually spread the signal. And so what I'd like to do is, rather than drawing a whole new thing, I'd just like us to run this backwards. If we imagine that this is a, a, a neural, and the actual potential has come from this direction, it could give its signals to a number of neurons which then spread out, and that would be divergent. Okay. Now. In terms of how summation can occur, we've got here already a spatial summation. And spatial means that you get a signal from a number of different inputs. And this actually is not different to the way that we would uh, communicate with somebody if we, for example, let's take a really easy example of telling someone, a child, not to do something. If you were to see a child reaching for a hot flame or something, if at, in a very short space of time, one, two, three adults shouted, NO! Then that child would have a very strong, clear message. And that is the same as spatial. If we have here three, but it could be thousands in real life because we're talking about the, the sheer volume of numbers of neurons, but if you have a number of neurons which contribute to the signal, then they will summate to form an overall result. It could be minus 55 and therefore an action potential, or it could be less than 55 and therefore not. But they all come together to summate. So the, 
The chloride ions and the sodium ions I gave an example is an example of spatial summation. Okay? And it's when a number of different sources come in. And obviously that would be more convergent. The other type of summation, I can actually get rid of the other two neurons I put in. Um, because the other type of summation is temporal. And temporal is, as it sounds, is to do with time. If I go back to my child who I'm trying to stop touching the flame, I think that a number of adults are pretty much at the same time going, no, would have stopped the child, spatially. But the other way of stopping the child would be saying, no, 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 just with one person saying it. And that is what happens with temporal uh, summation. And that is, that, and we need to just remember the action potential here. The action potential fires at the threshold potential, sodium ions come in, potassium ions come in, they hyperpolarize, and then the sodium potassium pump and the sodium, sorry, the potassium leak channel get the resting potential back. And we say that there is a refractory period. And that is the time that the neuron takes to reset and can't fire again. And with temporal, if we had action potential, refractory period, action potential, refractory period, action potential, refractory period, action potential, refractory period, then we're going to have a build-up of, for example, with acetylcholine, Na pluses, because there is a repeating of the message in very quick succession. No, 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 don't touch that! To our child. And so we say that we have got temporal summation of how much the signal is added to by how quickly they come in. And so if we have a very strong signal because we have chung, 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 and the gaps there were the refractory periods, then this is going to reinforce the signal and therefore be more likely that we have an action potential. And so, finishing on that last example, there is one slight subtlety which can occur, which is in the interests of the organism. And that is, temporal summation is great if, it is, if you are having action potentials firing down and they want, to, they want to convey a signal, which is important. But if that goes on for too long, we get the phenomenon, which is great for us, of being able to ignore signals that don't matter. Remember that the whole nervous system, the hormonal system, all of the mechanisms we have in our bodies to respond to our environment are there because they aid survival. If we are able to adapt our behaviour to the things that we come across, we see, we sense, we feel, then we're going to have a better chance of survival. And as important as being able to go, oh my goodness, tiger, and running, is being able to say, I can ignore that. I can ignore that. I don't have to waste my energy or my attention on that because it doesn't in any way affect my survival. And a classic one would be the neurons firing when we wear clothes. Right now, all over my body, I have neurons that are technically firing because my pressure receptors uh, and my touch receptors are saying, I can feel something, I can feel something, I can feel something. But my body ignores it because it's just like overkill. And the way that this happens is that in my example earlier, when it went chung, 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 and that therefore meant that there was going to be a response. If I carried on doing that for a long time, it would actually become desensitised. And the reason it would become desensitised is that all of these vesicles of neurotransmitter would be used up, and they wouldn't be able to be regenerated quick enough so that when an action potential arrived, it would be able to put some more neurotransmitter into the gland. So effectively, you run out of the neurotransmitter, you can't recycle it quick enough, 
because you've just been having chum, 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 chum for 